Hello, P10 Foundation family. Um, it's Tom Frazier here. I'm a clinical psychologist and the chief science officer at Autism Speaks. Kristen Anthony, the president and CEO of the P10 Foundation, asked me to give a, a short talk about some of the things that we've learned and how they can improve and impact the lives of people with P10 mutations who also have autism. Uh, in 2014, uh, I, I published a study along with Dr. Kara Sang, who many of you know as one of the leading uh, researchers and also physicians um, uh, looking at people with P10 mutations. And um, what we found together was um, that there are some specific difficulties that people with P10 mutations and autism have. In particular, we found that they have slower processing speed and working memory. And as a result of that, it becomes harder to, for people with P10 mutations with autism to process information quickly. Um, it, it also becomes difficult for them to manipulate information in their mind. Um, and that's really what we do with our working memory is we sort of allow information to be put in sequences and uh, that can be harder for people with P10 autism. So what we need to do um, both as parents and caregivers and therapists and clinicians is we need to be patient when speaking with individuals, when giving instructions or directives to people with P10 autism uh, who show this particular pattern. We also wanna make sure that teachers and therapists are aware that they shouldn't assume that all of the information that they're providing is being encoded into memory. And so, for example, as a teacher or therapist, you can use attention questions to sort of understand what it is it that the person has received, what have they not received, what would you like to go over again? We also found in our study that people with P10 autism have significant problems with fine and gross motor uh, skills, uh, particularly when they're younger, but even as they get older. And so it's really important that people with P10 autism get occupational and physical therapy. And we know that they also may require some other daily life accommodations. Um, we also know that if they do get the therapy, they do seem to improve in their motor skills. And so it's really important that we get those therapies in place. And then finally, we found that many people with P10 autism are less likely to get upset with change or be to, uh, overly responsive to sensory stimulation. And so this is a real strength. Uh, a lot of the people with P10 autism that we've seen in our clinics tend to be happier. They tend to go with the flow uh, relative to other people with autism that we see in our clinics. And so this is a strength, but it also is something that we need to be aware of. Um, for example, it can sometimes lead other folks to think that people with P10 autism don't have any difficulties or that they don't need any special accommodations or attention or learning assistance. And so sometimes their difficulties can seem more hidden or subtle. And so it's important that teachers and therapists and clinicians understand this, that we utilize this as a strength, but also that we don't become complacent. So I hope this brief talk has been useful and thank you very much for your time.